It feels like science fiction. Towering super trees. A misty mountain. A flower field blooming in cool, air-conditioned air. But this isn't a dream or an accident. This is Gardens by the Bay. A garden engineered to thrive in the tropics. So how was it made? And what keeps it alive? Across the water from Marina Bay sits one of Singapore's most iconic green spaces. Spanning over a hundred hectares of reclaimed land, Gardens by the Bay is a city garden of the future. And at its centre, the Super Tree Grove. They rise like giants, metal trunks wrapped in over 158,000 plants. There are 18 in total, some as tall as a 16-storey building. Each one is a vertical garden built with panels where plants grow, cling and bloom. Keeping them this lush takes work. We're going all the way up to see how this towering garden is maintained. So what we look out for on the tree itself, you'll be looking out for bromelates that are having dry leaves and also some green water within the bromelates reservoir. You will clear the brown leaves. Bromeliads are hardy plants, holding water, thriving in heat and needing little soil. Perfect for trees growing sideways, 20 metres above ground. Then as for the air plants, we will start to take them out if they are overgrown to allow more space for them to grow. Next, the climbing plants. These grow fast, sometimes too fast. And when they take over, they block light from everything else. I will prune away so that the climbers won't cover too much of the sunlight received for the bromeliads and the air plants. And also the orchids, as sunlight is a crucial energy for them to make food for flowers and even to create more leaves, more colourful foliages. For a tree this tall, no one's watering it by hand. Hidden inside each super tree is an automated system that feeds water straight from the trunk. High-tech systems help, but here the human touch still matters the most. Because the super trees aren't just part of Gardens by the Bay. I identify it as an icon for Singapore. It's quite important to make sure that super tree is a good representative and a good standard of horticultural excellence in that sense. Uh, it's quite important to handle that and to manage that. Caring for the super trees is just one part of the story. They're not just vertical gardens. They're key to a much larger system that keeps gardens by the bay running beautifully and sustainably. And behind that system is Addison, who helps make the gardens work smarter and a little more like nature. In essence, the super tree is, uh, is fairly basic. It's a design structure and to make it look more like a tree. But right on top is where the secret lies. Hidden among the branches, 11 of the 18 super trees are topped with solar panels, seamlessly woven into their canopy. So just like real trees, they gather sunlight and they turn it over into energy. That energy lights up the super trees at night and cools the conservatories during the day. A garden designed to power itself wherever it can. 
and one super tree has a different job. It acts like a chimney, venting warm air up and out of the gardens. Not factory fumes, but exhaust gases from a hidden biomass that runs entirely on plants. We collect about one ton of wood waste on a daily basis. Uh, these include tree clippings. Also, we have to do pruning every day. All these horticulture waste is then collected. It goes through an incineration process that generates steam and heat that powers turbine that in the end generates electrical energy for our usage. From the super trees to the biomass plant, almost nothing goes to waste. Beneath the beauty, it runs like a living system. But above ground, the work never stops. Across the gardens, another transformation is underway. Inside the flower dome, a brand new display is about to bloom. And the race to rebuild it happens overnight. Here, the seasons change by design. March brought cherry blossoms, April brought tulips. Each switch happens in just a week, with teams working through the night to get every detail right. Yeah, just behind Singapore. Leading that charge is Grace, making sure thousands of tulips are planted in the right place and bloom right on cue. So on every night, typically, you will have eight to ten people, which is my gardeners, they are working together with us to plant in the tulips, to do the placement of the plants and to place in the props. It looks simple, just plant the tulips. But Grace and her team are working with dozens of varieties in different colours and carefully mapped patterns. The tricky part? None of them have bloomed yet and everything has to be planted blind. When we receive the tulips, they are all green. Singapore 15 box, we finished already. So that sheet of paper is very important to me because that manual actually helps me identify the names to the different tulips. We will never be able to identify which one until like three to four days later, then they will show some colours when we plant them out in the field. And planting blind isn't the only challenge. Tulips are cold climate flowers, built for spring temperatures between 12 and 18 degrees Celsius. Singapore is hot and humid year-round. Keeping them alive here takes serious planning and even colder air. We have to make sure that we control that climatic condition in Flower Dome itself appropriately. We do have a perpetual spring, kind of like a temperature, just to keep the flower flowering. And then in order to control the light, we actually have shades deployed during the daytime. The shades act like filters, covering the glass to soften the sunlight. They let in just enough light to keep the dome bright without letting the flowers overheat or burn. Light, temperature, timing. That's what keeps the flower dome in bloom. Just next door, it's a different world. Cooler, mistier. A place designed to feel like you've stepped into the clouds. This is the cloud forest. A mountain rises from the mist, crowned by one of the world's tallest indoor waterfalls. Every layer of the cloud forest recreates the cool, moist air of tropical highlands. Time bursts of mist keep the air damp, the plants breathing and the ecosystem thriving. Outside, the city stays warm, but in here, the temperature holds steady, a calm 23 to 25 degrees Celsius. 
a space built to slow you down, inspired by nature and powered by design. It's easy to forget you're still in the city. But what feels effortless is the result of design, planning and care. Gardens by the Bay runs on systems where every element is designed to work. Super trees that harvest sunlight, cooling systems that keep tulips blooming in the heat, hidden engines that turn waste into power, a place imagined for the tropics, engineered with purpose to grow with the city.